black man who ever walked the African. Malcolm X called him the greatest black man who ever walked the African continent, while Belgium and the US plotted his assassination. His name was Patrice Lumumba, the first prime minister of the Democratic Republic of Congo. He is considered by many a martyred hero, a symbol of anti-imperialism and pan-African unity. This is the story of how Lumumba came to power, dreaming of a better future for the Congo and Africa, and how that dream quickly turned into a nightmare as he was arrested and murdered in January of 1961, now known as Kinsigan. Many Congolese boycotted in protest. Running out of options, Lumumba reached out to the United Nations to expel Belgian forces and help restore internal order. Lumumba requested UN troops to suppress the rebellion in Katanga, but the UN forces were not authorized to do so under the mandate. The United States and France also refused to budge. Frustrated with the West, Lumumba tilted the ballots and reached out to the Soviet Union. Mm -mm. Request that's not true. Okay, that's definitely not true. Definitely not true. That's the that's what they want you to think. Patrice Lumumba was falsely labeled a communist, okay? And I'm gonna be the first one to tell you that on the internet, but everybody knows. He was in his thirties. He's the first democratically elected president of the Demo of Congo. Congo got their freedom from Belgium and he became the president. They voted and they got their freedom. They voted to basically separate and have their own government. Belgium gave Belgium Belgium recommended that, hey, we don't want to quickly transition. We've been owning you guys for literally the last couple hundred years. So how about you let us, how about we have a gradual process of, you know, giving you power instead of suddenly doing it. And the Belgians, and I mean, the, and the uh, Congolese voted, no, we want to have instant control of our government. We don't want you guys to stay around any longer than you have to. We don't want a gradual process. We want to do it now because they were fired up because in the 60s, that's when all the African countries started to get their independence. And there was this pan-Africanist movement, which means all Africans look at themselves as the same instead of different tribes, not tribalism, because they got millions of tribes. And that's, that's how slavery started, because if you don't like the other tribe, because you hate them, you've been worn with them, so you don't care what happens to them. Divine and conquer is applied. The European model is applied. And it's hatred for that tribe, even though they're just like you. You understand? So the Pan-Africanist movement seek to rectify that and actually look at everybody as the same. So everybody was inspired to be free. And one thing about Africans that I admire is the fact that they're all so well-educated because they, I mean, one thing about it, they went beyond what the Europeans gave them. The Europeans tried to give them schooling and stuff like that when they were colonies, but the Africans, they did their thing and they went past the Europeans. They became smarter than their teachers in a lot of cases. You know, especially this generation from this era, the 60s. But what I want to say is he was falsely labeled a communist. Back then during the Cold War, that was a, a move on the chessboard that they would do. They would falsely label you a communist. That way the U.S. would target, target you for assassination. And in this case, Belgium and the U.S. targeted him for assassination simply because what happened was as soon as he became president, a few weeks later, there was a rebellion. A guy who was in his political party, who we used to be friends with, tried to kill him and got jealous because he, he was famous and he was the hero and he was this young guy that was going to change Africa. He was jealous. It was an older guy, so he plotted to kill him along. And Belgium was mad because Belgium never wanted to give up the Congo, and they hated Patrice Lumumba because he represented the youth movement, which was freedom. So they were backing the guy who was hating him because they were hoping to secretly take control. And if that guy would have overthrew Patrice, he promised that Belgium could still have control of the government and stuff like that. They could have a partnership, excuse me, if something, something like that. But at the end of the day, they killed Patrice Lumumba because he was a threat, basically. And they made up this rumor that he reached out to the Soviets. And a lot of people got killed for, for allegedly reaching out to the Soviets or reaching out to the Americans. In the Cold War, War, the Cold War Russia would kill you if you reached out to the Americans for help, for military uh, aid, food, whatever. Any reason you reach out, they, and they had spies all over the world, just like Americans had spies all over the world. And if they found out that you were trying to contact Moscow or D.C. on the other end, vice versa, they'll kill you. That's espionage. It's deep. So they would lie and say, oh, he was a communist. And that way they could get you out, kill you. Peace.